and welcome. Today we've got something a little special with, for you. With me is Frederick, the CEO and Game Director at Interceptor, and we're going to take you behind the scenes for a little bit. So, you know, tell us about Interceptor. Uh, yeah, Interceptor is, uh, is a, a company established in uh, 2012. Uh, actually, we started as a group in 2010. Uh, working on Duke Nukem Reloaded, which was this uh, unprecedented fan project that was uh, supposed to bring back you know, uh, Duke Nukem in next-gen graphics. Um, we, uh, we closed down the project in uh, 2011 and started working on Rise of the Triad, uh, 2013, uh, as people call it, in uh, 2012. And uh, 18 months later, we, uh, we released Rise of the Triad, which we're extremely proud of, you know, hardcore, First-person shooter with tons of guts and blood. Oh, you know, yeah. Just what we'd love to play. Like a step back to the good old traditionals from the 80s. Definitely. So, um, so, so I mean, you, you mentioned obviously a, a lot of Duke Nukem, but your new project is, is not that. You, you're working on something a little different this time. <laughs> so, so, I mean, tell us about it. What, what are you working on? Um, well, uh, f you know, we, uh, we, we're working on a brand new IP that we're re re really excited about. Uh, it's a game called Bombshell. Um, Bombshell is, is, is a game that um, that we almost wanted to do at some point. Uh, Bombshell was originally uh, part of, of, of Duke Nukem back in, in the mid-90s. Uh, she was never <coughs> formally introduced, but uh, there were concepts of a character called Bombshell. And we always wanted to take that concept and uh, turn it into our own kind of IP thing. Oh. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we're, we're working on a... So what, what's, what's, what's her inspiration? I mean, what, 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 what can you tell us about, um, about Bombshell? Um, well, Bombshell is, is inspired by, you know, 80s action heroes. Um, she's, a, she's a female female character, uh, extremely badass, and very different from other female characters. Hey, what's up, guys? Hi. Hey, what's up? Uh, did you mention about her bionic arm? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> she has uh, a bionic arm? Yeah, she has a bionic arm. <clears throat> the, um, so Bombshell's arm uh, is, is a bionic mechanical arm that she can turn into different weapons and use throughout the game for a lot of different gameplay elements. Be which is Because uh, reasons. Because of reasons, yeah. she uh, she gave up her her life basically for a squad of soldiers and lost her arm in, in action and uh, got a mechanical black market arm created straight out of Terminator. It, it sounds roughly like a, a, a Sylvester Stallone or Arnold Schwarzenegger movie plot. Definitely, <laughs> with a female and very different <coughs> from other female characters in games. You know, you have like the Lara Croft, for instance. You know, drastically different character that's way. She more doesn't have a bionic arm, for instance. It's that, that's for instance. a fair difference, right there. Big difference, and way more rough around the edges. You know, she drinks whiskey and drives a bike. You know, she's uh, she's not the uh, uh, sensual, sexy female character as you would imagine mm. with with big cleavage and such. I'm sensing a, I'm sensing a. I mean, looking at looking at some of the concept art uh, for um, Bombshell, you, you're sensing a kind of a a return to the '80s vibe to it. I mean, what what, what are the inspirations that you put? What what sources have you drawn upon? Like. Musically or thematically? Um, thematically, uh, hey, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. What's up? You guys are talking about eighties, but uh, can I get Top Gun? Uh, yes. Yeah, so you really want to play? Uh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Thanks. Good luck. No problem. Oh uh, yeah, uh, Bombshell is inspired <laughs> by uh, by a lot of eighties uh, uh, action heroes. You know, primarily the inspiration for for this character is a uh, has an edge of cyberpunk to her. Uh, she's this rebellious hacker kind of cyberpunk girl that oh. has military training. Um, so music and thematic, it, it's, it's very very gritty, dirty, a uh, lot of heavy metal music, uh, it's mixed with a lot of electronic music. Uh, so it's this whole uh, mixture, fusion of electronica and metal and steel and, you know, it's... She it's, sounds pleasant. She, uh, she's not pleasant to be around. <laughs> um, and she does kick some, kick some butt, definitely. Okay. Well, I mean, um, getting, getting past that, because obviously I, I imagine a lot of the people watching on right now obviously do this because oh, we love games. Um, what's, what's it like? Because, I mean, Interceptor is such, you're not a big studio. You know, you're, you're working the indie scene, you're doing your own thing. Um, what, what's, it, what's it like? I mean, can you, can you tell us what it's like to have like a, a small team like this and, and you're a bit fragmented as well? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, Interceptor is a virtual studio and, and you know, we, we want to do, uh, we do the, uh, the more AAA quality games uh, in terms of the visuals and the production quality. And that's very hard to do um, when you're uh, you know, five or six people uh, as an independent studio. So uh, the way we solved that was to, uh, to create what we call a virtual studio which we uh, use for Rise of the Triad. And that allows us to, to hire extremely high talented people from mm. that work that all the 
also just we, we've had people from Valve and Naughty Dog, for instance, that can actually work from home. Ah. Um, the way we then treat our virtual team is like a family. We have this big uh, online virtual tool, which is basically based around a forum structure where everyone communicates about everything in the game. So we have a system administrator that gives feedback on character art. Because why not? You know, we're one big family working on these games. And I think uh, the, um, the flat structure we have in the company <coughs> combined with the virtual model that allows people to work from home as well as everyone being a family and working ah. on these games together allows us to, to create uh, very high quality titles for very low budgets. Uh, with uh, industry legends, you know, we, we have people like Scott Miller on board, for instance, who, who works on storyline for our games. So, so it's, it's a very unique structure yeah. uh, that allows us to create very high quality games. Well, it, it also kind of, it, it does show, because I mean, if, if we look at some of the images um, that, that we've seen, the, um, I mean, the, the, the pixel count is it's quite high, so to say. Your, 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 your level of, of detail uh, considering the game and everything is, yeah. is, is actually quite high, your budget is taken into account especially. It's interesting to work on, on next-gen titles. We, we, you know, when, we, when we look at an, an action RPG like, like Bombshell, we, uh, we have all the comparisons. We have you know, the new Diablo 3, Diablo 3 Reaver of Souls for instance, where when you look at a top-down isometric game like this and look at the, the tri-count for the characters, it's still based on tri-counts that you would do maybe five years ago. Oh. And we're in a unique situation in the industry right now where we can move into next gen, where we can just say, okay, everything previous gen, let's screw that and let's work with, uh, with the hardware of the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and next gen PCs. And that allows us to do, you know, try higher try counts, for instance. The try counts of our characters is the same as a first person shooter from two years ago. So it's equal to Mass Effect 3 try counts for characters that mm. you see. Uh, you see from an asymmetric perspective. Yeah, uh, it doesn't really make that much sense because you'll never see all this detail. You mean the the uh, the, the hours spent on the eye shadow are exactly. wasted. Exactly. But uh. when when going to the kind of uncanny valley of, of the detail is what we really enjoy about working with next gen because it allows us to create visually stunning environments and characters and so on in a game you see from an from a, a different perspective. And it allows us to zoom in, show characters up close, you know, do cool cinematics and all that stuff without ever swapping out the characters. So it's a lot of freedom with working with next gen. That's pretty cool. Um, what can you since we're on character uh, development right now? What can you tell us about the the progress of of the character? I mean, from the from the birthing perspective, yeah. um, to to like the development and the finished thing. How many how many stages and iterations do you have to go through to get to end that? Um, the character, it's the design of the character itself, the the physical appearance of the character, um, started out by the original three rooms design from uh, from 90, 97. Uh, 96, 97 was the original concept for Bombshell. Um, a funny little Easter egg kind of thing. Uh, Bombshell was actually originally created um, uh, by 3D Realms and Apogee uh, to be part of Command and Conquer series. Um, she was supposed to be. She was a better Tanya. She was a better Tanya, but this this was uh, this was before uh, before around Red Alert, but before Tanya was was soon become a popular character. So she was supposed to be the. The, um, the competitor to uh, the Commando, uh, which is pretty funny. We read through some of the early designs that yeah. Bombshell was supposed to be in Command and Conquer, and it shows they were big Command and Conquer fans at, at, at 3D Realms and Apogee. That was really that. funny because we're big yeah. CNC fans as well. Um, but then their concept turned into uh, to Bombshell in its, in its, uh, in its most uh, popular understanding is that you know, when you call a girl a Bombshell, you know, she's often busty and sexy and blonde and so on. So um, that was the original concept. Um, we, w she didn't have a storyline uh, per se, she was very loosely defined. Uh, but we liked the idea of having a female character that was kind of a female action hero. Yeah. Uh, that that you know, could be the female version of Solid Snake or Duke Nukem, for instance. Uh, but could, could, you know, she could play with those guys and she would be a real challenge to those guys. Yeah. So Master Chief is another one that she could be a real challenge to. Um, so we decided to, uh, to bring in an element that would make her unique. Besides uh, her backstory, which is a really painful backstory, and her journey throughout the game and the storyline is, is also a very painful journey for her. Mm. Uh, we won't spoil anything, but there's a, there's a lot of... A well, lot of if, you, if you had to, let's, let's be honest, if you had to, what is the biggest spoiler you can give us? Um, Actually, and... what's the biggest spoiler there is? Let's just cut straight to the All right. Uh, well, the biggest spoiler is that... Uh... That's... <laughs> Did not see that coming. Yeah, okay. No, right? that, that, is going to, that is going to upset a lot of people. 
It's gonna be one, hilarious. Once they play the app, I'm looking forward to that. That's okay, yeah. Be fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, we needed to give her an edge and, and give her the element of her that, that would uh, compete with, you know, big brutal aliens and intergalactic adventures and so on. Yeah. So, uh, so we decided that, uh, you know, she needs a motherfucking heavy robotic arm that can you know, annihilate enemies and turn into... With, with little consideration paid to how you still walk up straight when that thing exactly. kind of... Exactly. Yes. That is... Uh, Pure, traditional 80s style logic there. Pure yeah. badass logic. Bigger weapon. Exactly. The bigger the better. So, but yeah, it brings in a lot of gameplay mechanics uh, that, that we really like. For instance, the way her arm can turn into different weapons is really, really cool. We have, uh, we have one, uh, one weapon which is kind of like a minigun. Mm -hmm. And uh, the secondary fire mode is basically where you punch the ground. And the, uh, the, the hand of the arm basically folds into the ground as a stand yeah. and then she uh, detaches it from her body and it turns into like a sentry gun. So you can detach that, it turns into a sentry gun and then you have a pistol in your hand. And you can use that sentry gun to lead away enemy fire. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's super badass. You can use a lot of different things. There's another mode where you basically launch it in the air and it turns into a little drone. That's called Shelly's little friend, and it uh, flies around and basically helps her uh, de de defend herself from enemies. So there's a lot of cool gameplay mechanics where you can use your arm at different things, but also at the expense of sometimes losing it. Some puzzles you have to shoot your arm in and, and, and do things for you while so but ending up weaker while doing it. Ending yeah. up weaker while doing it, for instance. So uh, so we're, we're experimenting a lot with how how we use this in gameplay. That's pretty cool, actually. Um, but speaking speaking of, of gameplay again, because we kind of keep coming back to it, um, I, I, I would like to point out the similarities to things like uh, Crusader Nora Morse. And obviously, yeah. I mean, you, you can see where your your inspiration comes from in that that era of computer gaming. Um, sorry, <laughs> the, those, that's what you get for life. Um, but but when I mean, obviously, for, for those of you who remember the the era back in the eighties and the games that that we had, there will be a lot of of, of very obvious yeah. traces, but. But looking aside from that, um, look into things like music, uh, voice acting, sound, especially, is also a really integral part of it. Um, Definitely. So how, how do you how do you challenge how do you handle that challenge? Because I mean, obviously, for a small studio, you don't have the budget to hire a, an orchestra to do a symphony for you. Exactly. So what do you do? How do you, how do you get that atmosphere? Um, so we uh, we had Andrew do uh, our, our composer do all the music for our previous games, and um, Andrew does an amazing job. But but what Andrew does best is this heavy, as we say, heavy fucking metal. Uh, you know, the Rise of the Stride soundtrack is absolutely kick ass, blasting heavy metal all the way through. Uh, for Bombshell, we we kind of need to go in a different direction. Um, Bombshell is is she does have that uh, Tar Tarantino attitude, mm. grindhouse uh, feeling over her. But um, the game is also epic in scale. So you need that combination between or or orchestrated music and, and heavy metal. Um, it was a big challenge for Andrew to, to put together. I think I we, imagine, uh, yeah. we, we, we referenced a lot to Hans Zimmer. Um, Orchestra metal, I think you've invented a genre. Orchestra metal. <laughs> There's also a bit of electronic in there because we wanna, we wanna kind of symbolize her, her, the, her arm mm. and the effectiveness of her arm through, through the music. So it's a big mixture of a lot of different genres. There's a, a small little sample of it on, uh, yeah. on our website and we're gonna put up the theme as well so you guys can hear the official bombshell, bombshell theme. But uh, it's it's been a challenge. But I, I'd say Hans Zimmer has been uh, the biggest uh, influence on the quality of, mm. of the instrument. And Andrew is doing one hell of a job. The the soundtrack for this game is gonna be absolutely blasting. Cool. That sounds good. So what are you doing for, for things like voice acting? Because um, I mean, I, I, I hate to draw attention away from it. But <laughs> we, we do see some games that well should be burnt at the stake for the quality of their <laughs> voice acting. Uh, I won't get into which games. It's got nothing to do with you guys, but just I just don't want to derail it. But obviously, that is a huge make or break yeah. factor. Um, so I mean, what do you what do you do for stuff like that? Because I'm thinking like your funding must be limited, and voice acting isn't cheap. Exactly. How do you how do you handle that? How do you deal with it? So the voice of Bombshell is obviously the most important aspect of the game. You know, the voice actor brings life to this character. Um, first of all, we have John St. John on board. Uh, John St. John is you know, a really good friend of us. He does uh, the villain in our game, which he does, amazing, he, he does amazingly well. Uh, absolutely badass. Um, and then we have uh, Rachel Robinson, uh, another professional voice actor. She does uh, the president in our game. It's a female president. And uh, we have a voice actor called uh, Amy, uh, Amy Naim doing a bombshell. Okay. And uh, it's, it's been quite a process finding the correct voice actor to do, uh, to do bombshell. But uh, but Amy is is doing it one hell of a job. There's uh, there's enough there's enough toughness. Uh, you get that Sarah Connor from Terminator toughness yeah. in there, but also the uh, the vulnerability 
uh, of, of her character. And it's, it's, a, it's a very delicate mix. And you have to be really careful that it doesn't get too cheesy. We, we, we don't want to end up in that group where yeah, she's yeah. another cheesy characters with cheesy one-liners with no personality. You know, we, when, when, you, when she sees her dead squad being killed by aliens, you, know, you, you can hear in her voice that she, you know, these people care, uh, you know, she cares for these people, but also you hear the anger and the revenge in her voice. You know, uh, so so it took Damn a lot of time. Damn you, you know, anonymous grunt number five exactly. was, my, was my friend. Exactly, um, it's it's a personal vendetta she has against okay. what you'll see in the story. But, 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 that, that, but that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting aspect actually, because I mean, quite often, and obviously we're running it down slowly here as well, but quite often you see a lot of these uh, game universes, especially from that era, who make the mistake of of, of being in on the cheese, yeah. so to speak. Instead of taking their own universe seriously, uh, they set up all these criteria, and then they look at it and go, it's a bit silly, that, isn't it? Mm. And then they start getting self-ironic and self-aware. And It might seem like a defense mechanism, but a lot of the time, the game suffers if it does not take its own universe very seriously. Um, we talked about Duke Nukem before as well. You know, Duke Nukem is a great example. You know, the, 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 the issue, uh, the, the, what made Duke 3D so genius, besides its gameplay, was that the world itself took itself seriously. Oh, it was very dark, very gritty. Um, exactly. Obviously, Duke very is scary in many ways. Exactly. You know, once you hear the octa brain for the first time, you're oh, shitting your pants. Yeah, God, I did not want to go down those toilets. <laughs> um, but it's, it's true. There was a there was an element to it for those that remember. Obviously, um, that Duke might have been full of one-liners, but the game itself took the game was serious. It, it was it was an action movie, but it was an action movie that believed its own premises. Exactly. So obviously, that's that's something that you know you obviously want to have along. Um, so, but, but I mean, wrapping it down, if it is from a, 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 from a, from a, a game developer to the fans, really, for, for the viewers, is there anything in particular about this entire experience that you'd like to share? Uh, yeah. Um, I'd like to talk a bit about you know, the, the, the lawsuit of, of, of what's been happening with us, because there's been a lot of questions. Are, are you guys making a Duke game? Are you not making a Duke game? And, and the reality is, once, once something like this happens, you, you have to stand by. You know, and lawsuits take a long time, and it's a long process. And while we while we take a break, we can't just sit and do nothing. Oh, okay. Um, so we saw a great opportunity that we wanted to grab. That you know, this is this is our chance to do our own IP, and, and we grabbed it, and we started working on that, and yeah. uh, and it turned out really really well for us. Um, so so that's that's how uh, how Bombshell came alive. We always wanted to do Bombshell uh, at some point. So the opportunity presented itself, and we really wanted to, wanted to reach out for it. Um, and you know about about the previous game that we worked on. Uh, you know we might get back to it. We might. It, it all depends on what happens. Really. Yeah, of course. We, I mean, we, we won't really. There's no point to get into that. Yeah. But it, it's true. It, it's it's interesting to see how you. I mean, if, if anyone out there has aspirations, if something gets in your way, then find a different project and yeah. start. You know, keep working. Um, and it, it's, it's nothing about who's who's right or wrong. No, no, no. no it's no. just the respect for the whole thing. Uh, we, we we can't. Uh, we, we can't respect ourselves working on, on something while there's a lawsuit going yeah, on. Yeah, no, of so, course not. Yeah. It sounds like a really good choice. And I must admit, I'm, I'm sure many of us are actually looking forward to, to having a mess with it and, and see what the game is. Yeah. Well, well thank you very much for taking yeah, the time. Yeah, thank you very much for coming. Yeah, no worries. See ya.